Being able to hop into a personal spacecraft at a moment's notice and shoot off into the night sky or space has its advantages and is, frankly, extremely appealing. But the reality of the situation is that gravity control is more about efficiency, cost reduction, safety, reliability, search and rescue, etc. Just as with lasers, gravity control will have a million and one uses beyond mere personal spacecraft. With grav control, we can rescue millions from disaster areas or defend our home from unwitting asteroids. Should wildfires arise, no problem. Smoke particles and thermals do not affect the craft. Yet, we can also transport huge amounts of 20 and 40 foot ocean going shipping containers packed to the brim with goods above and around the planet for near naught. Whilst also redefining the meaning of the ambulance, aka the anti-gravulance. We can also transport millions of folks around the planet or even off-world to awaiting spaceships, space stations, and eventually to other planets. Grav control opens the door wide into space as never before, making such things possible as Cloud City, Stratopoli, on Earth, on Venus, and elsewhere. This also means that we will be able to construct space stations anywhere both within and outside our system. And, of course, begin building starships in space. This video and others were brought to you in part by our forward-thinking, adventurous patrons and by you, our viewers. Thank you. There's nothing new about the idea of controlling gravity. And thanks to the writings of innumerable scientists and science fiction writers, nowadays we're all well familiarized with the concept. And of course, we too have videos explaining gravity. There are perhaps millions of beneficial uses of gravity control. We're about to discuss some of them. It's no secret, it's all over the web. As we might expect for such tremendously useful technology, the subject of gravity control has been pondered by the likes of NASA, Boeing, DARPA, BAE, AC Gravity, and more still. And, of course, there are many nations with their own projects. But we're not here to discuss who researched what and to what degree they may have already achieved grav control. We're here to discuss the benefits of grav control. Not that long ago among the scientific community, the words anti-gravity were taboo. One did not use such words for fear of ridicule at best or at worst, being blacklisted and out of work. Interestingly though, at the same time, it was okay to speculate about time travel. Well, that was then and this is the present. Everything is now changing. There are still a few old fashioned scientists stubbornly insisting grav control is impossible. But the world of science is about to flip flop upside down, so it hardly matters anymore. Today we have scientists and even companies actively researching grav tech. We can imagine a behind the closed doors hypothetical scenario. After much postulating and theorizing, and countless days of crunching the numbers, scientists and theorists alike became confident. Armed with this new knowledge and understanding, this data was sent to engineering, where they have done, once again, what engineers do best, perform magic. 
as the thing silently hovers, days on end, barely sipping energy. Is this all unbelievable? With so many space games and science fiction movies depicting gravity control, some are now asking, is this real? There is a certain number of folks who have little to no clue or believe what is about to take place is actually real. It's not that we have some kind of special abilities. It's that we can see the future and where it's heading, as Arthur C. Clarke and many other futurists did. Oh yes, this is quite real. If we examine the two most affected industries, transportation and shipping, especially ocean-going vessels, we can begin to see the real need for gravity control. According to the FAA, they handle just over 16 million flights per year. Within the US alone, there are some 5,000 aircraft flying during peak hours. Every day, more than 2.7 million passengers fly in and out of the US. According to aviation analysts globally, the total number of aircraft currently in service is between 7,000 and 23,000 plus at any given moment, depending. London's Heathrow Airport handles some 1,300 flights per day, with one airliner taking off or landing every 43 seconds on average. CNN did a special report about the busiest airport in the world, stating more than 107 million passengers flew through Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport last year, making it the busiest passenger airport in the world for the 21st year in a row. Beijing Capital International Airport is a close second at 96 million passengers annually, whilst Dubai International Airport stands at 88 million passengers, followed by Los Angeles International Airport, LAX, having reported some 84.6 million passengers per year. The Boeing 747, not the most efficient plane, consumes about four liters of fuel every second or roughly 200,000 plus liters per flight. That's a lot of fuel. The Boeing 737, a slightly smaller plane, burns approximately 2,800 liters of fuel per hour, about three quarters a liter per second, still a lot. That said, despite the huge amounts of fuel consumed, fuel cost still only equates to about 12% of their total operating expenses employees consist of both. But as oil prices become ever increasingly more difficult to extract, which it has now for some time, the cost of oil can only continue to climb. More importantly, that's a lot of CO2 and other gases dispersed in the air we breathe, not to mention the dumping of excess fuel just before landing. Grav control would allow a craft to both nullify the effects of gravity, of g-force, whilst moving the surrounding air for flight control. You see, GravTech allows you to control both gravity and the surrounding air. You see, GravTech allows you to control both gravity and the surrounding air. Compared with holding a massive vehicle on loft, the work required to move air is mere pittance. In fact, the residual fields leaking through and past the craft would suffice. The air above would be pushed away while it's simultaneously drawn in below, pushing up against the bottom of the craft, increasing air pressure, affording the craft greater stability, control, efficiency, especially when you compare that with conventional aircraft. 
Fitted graph pads, repulsors, and attractors would deflect, pull, and push away the air without resistance, permitting potentially silent, completely non-polluting flight at very high speeds. Deflecting the air in front of the vehicle while simultaneously pulling the air in behind would create a vacuum in front and a high pressure region behind, driving the vehicle forward. It needs to be mentioned, the energy needed to keep a gravcraft aloft is supplied by Earth's own attractive pull. Deflecting Earth's gravitational field, as a superconductor does to a magnetic field, takes much less energy than creating an equal and opposite grav field. In fact, certain special materials may require practically no energy at all to do so, acting as a kind of gravitational superconductor. A gravcraft can utilize Earth's gravity field to propel itself horizontally by tilting in the direction of flight, like a helicopter or a quadcopter falling forward. This does, of course, mean that grav control will completely revolutionize the transportation industry. Much cleaner to operate, efficient, safer, more reliable, fun, and more. Grav control also means that the aircraft can perform maneuvers that it would not otherwise be able to do. Being able to alter velocity at a moment's notice assures a wider range of safety. Autopilots can easily be programmed to utilize grav control to its fullest. And with GravTech, the crew will not so easily be affected by sudden changes in direction or altitude. Should there be a problem within the craft or the craft is taken hostage, grav control can be designed at the time of manufacturing to automatically either maintain the craft's altitude for safety purposes or fly the craft to awaiting authorities. For truckers, the heavier the vehicle, the less efficient it is. And that's because of the very thing that prevents it from sliding off the road, friction. With GravTech, truckers would become gravers or flyers. We would need to give them new names. Of course, their vehicles would be able to both hover, that is, float on gravity, like a boat on water, and fly. I'm sure they would not be disappointed with such upgrade. By far, ocean-going shipping vessels consume the greatest amount of fuel, and with it, unfortunately, their profits as well. Generally speaking, fuel cost constitutes as much as 50 to 60 percent of total operating costs, depending, of course, on the type of ship and service. A modern large container vessel with a container capacity of 8,000 TEUs, 20-footer equivalent units, can consume more than 200 tons of fuel per day. A single round-trip voyage of one month will cost more than 3,000 USD, more should there be problems. So as and when oil prices increase, shipping will be among the hardest hit, translating into higher cost of goods but this also means that they will benefit the most from grav control. As already stated, grav control is more about efficiency, cost reduction, safety, reliability, search and rescue, etc. But it also opens the doorway wide for space exploration, for mining, and yes, eventually the family space yacht for those inching to get off Earth. Space elevators could potentially become the revolutionary space launch or rather space lift technologies. But they suffer from innumerable technical challenges that appear insurmountable. However, grav control eliminates the need for vulnerable cables, circumventing the greatest challenge of the space elevator and fundamentally changing the concept. However, gravity control eliminates the need for vulnerable cables, and circumventing the greatest challenge of the space elevator and fundamentally changing the concept. If necessary, energy can be beamed up from the surface as some space elevator concepts propose, or alternately, the climber can be fitted with a compact fusion reactor. Anti-gravity will literally revolutionize all forms of travel. This means that anti-gravity space elevator can be constructed anywhere on Earth going straight up, 
Building at the equator is no longer a strict necessity. Gravity control solves another problem plaguing space travel. The pull of gravity, of course. The difficulty is, spacecraft must reach high velocities in order to obtain orbit. But at the same time, they must do so whilst fighting against gravity. This is known as gravity losses. By eliminating a spacecraft's weight, which is distinct from mass, mind you, getting into space becomes the simple matter of attaining sufficient horizontal velocity. With GravTech, not even this will be a problem as it deflects air, attaining high velocities. With gravity losses and horizontal velocity no longer issues, we have remaining only the quote, distance to space, unquote. However, the distance to space, or rather to a typical low Earth orbit, is not that great, about 200 kilometers. If you think about it, that's considerably less than the distance an airline covers in one flight crossing a continent. To give another example, the English Channel has a maxed width of 240 kilometers, or 150 miles, about the same distance to orbit. Therefore, space is not that far at all. I'm sure many of you have traveled such distances in mere hours and do so several times a week, and perhaps some of you do so in one day. Anti-gravity holds the potential to hover, fixed at an altitude requiring little to no power, which means floating cities start to become practical here on Earth, Venus, Titan, and elsewhere, even out of our system. Folks could live just about anywhere. This is an incredibly exciting topic, one which we have barely scratched the surface of and will be returning to several more times. Again, gravity control has million and one uses from transportation to anti-gravity architecture to research to search and rescue to fire control and much more. Thank you for watching and until next time, keep wondering about space. Thank you.